Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be comparing two of the most popular herbs on the planet, uh, ashwagandha and Panax ginseng. So let's jump right in. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, my name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to uh, supplementation and nutrition. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit the big old red subscribe button that is below this video so that you guys can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right guys, so if you guys are familiar or have been curious with herbal supplementation to any degree, I'm sure you have come to the point where you are somewhat overwhelmed with just how many options there are. And so uh, one of the main points of this channel is to kind of help simplify the decision making process so that you guys can figure out uh, what supplements, what herbal supplements and natural supplements are right for your personal health goals. And so again, in this video in particular, we're going to be taking a deep dive into comparing two of the more popular um, adaptogenic herbs on the planet, which are again, ashwagandha and ginseng. Now, more specifically, we're going to talk about how they are similar and some of the traits that they kind of share as well as how they are different. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump into the first area of comparison, which is how they are alike. Now, the largest similarity between ashwagandha and Panax ginseng is the fact that they are both adaptogenic herbs. Now, this means specifically that through various mechanisms, um, these adaptogenic herbs are able to lower the effects of stress on the body. And one of the reasons that adaptogens just as a whole have become so popular over the past few years um, is the fact that they are able to so effectively reduce the effects of stress as well as improve mood which ashwagandha and Panax ginseng definitely fit this bill. Now, adaptogens usually do this by both increasing levels of specific neurotransmitters in the central nervous system, as well as uh, increasing levels of specific neuropeptides that also decrease levels of stress. And ashwagandha and Panax ginseng both seem to be arguably some of the most potent adaptogens that exist. Now, one of the first areas of comparison that I want to look at as far as how ashwagandha and ginseng are different is how they specifically interact with the body and affect mood. Now, mood for most individuals exists on a spectrum um, with kind of anxiety and nervousness type of symptoms on one end of the spectrum and more kind of lethargic and depressed symptoms on the other end of the spectrum. And my point in bringing this up is that that most individuals kind of exist on that spectrum at one place or another. And so most individuals will kind of tend towards um, anxiety. And then some individuals end up tending to more of the depressive side of that uh, spectrum. And so my point in bringing this up is that there really isn't a one size fits all approach to um, improving mood and taking natural uh, substances in order to improve mood. Now, with this in mind, it is important to note that ashwagandha definitely seems to be more calming when it comes to mood. And so um, ashwagandha definitely seems to work well with individuals that tend towards the anxiety end of the spectrum, whereas um, individuals that kind of uh, tend towards the more depressive um, end of the spectrum, Panax ginseng, typically um, will work better for those individuals. Now, the reason for this is that ashwagandha seems to be slightly more inhibitory than Panax ginseng is. And the reason for this is that ashwagandha's mechanisms of action seem to be quite inhibitory. And so ashwagandha has been shown in a handful of studies to uh, reduce cortisol um, as well as to kind of modulate the receptors of the 5-HT2A receptor as well as the GABA-A receptor, which are both um, slightly inhibitory neurotransmitter receptors. And so when these uh, neurotransmitter receptors get activated by ashwagandha and modulated by ashwagandha, uh, there definitely tends to be um, some relaxing properties that come along with this. Now on the flip side of this, Panax ginseng definitely seems to be more stimulatory and Unfortunately, the evidence here is somewhat vague. There just isn't a ton of research right now on how ginseng interacts specifically with neurotransmitters in the body. However, there are a couple of 
uh, studies in particular that kind of point to the fact that Panax ginseng may have the capacity to bind to the dopamine receptors as well as increase alertness, which are typically uh, signs of stimulation. However, with that being said, from what little evidence we do have, it is fairly clear that Panax ginseng does tend to be uh, slightly more cognitively stimulating. Now, the second area of comparison that I want to look at between these two herbs is how they affect hormone levels. And to be quite frank, there really isn't that much competition in this area. Um, ashwagandha really is the king when it comes to hormone optimization, specifically uh, for men. And the reason for this is that ashwagandha, um, as of right now, is literally the only herbal compound that has been shown in several different clinical trials to uh, improve testosterone production in men. And the reason for this is that ashwagandha is so effective at uh, both lowering cortisol and increasing thyroid hormone, which uh, both through separate hormone pathways in the body are able to increase levels of testosterone. And when you compare that to something like Panax ginseng, which also has been shown to increase testosterone in a few different studies, um, it does appear that Panax ginseng is only effective uh, at increasing testosterone levels in infertile men. And it appears that the only reason it's able to do this is because it has the capacity to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, which is an enzyme that converts testosterone into a more potent androgen uh, known as DHT. And so when you inhibit the production of DHT, it kind of causes a backlog of testosterone, uh, so to speak. And, um, and so through this mechanism, Panax ginseng is able to increase testosterone. However, it is at the detriment of decreasing uh, levels of DHT in the body, which isn't necessarily a good thing. If you are looking for something that is a little bit more calming and has the capacity to improve hormone function, ashwagandha is definitely going to be your best bet. And if you're looking for something that is a little bit more cognitively stimulating and has the uh, possible effect of being able to improve cognition, um, Panax ginseng is definitely going to be your best bet if that is your particular goal. Now, before I let you guys go, I do want to give another huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of available online classes on anything from entrepreneurship to graphic design to even things like uh, minimalism, which is actually a class that I'm currently taking by Aaron Broyle called uh, Everyday Minimalism that's actually been helping me out a ton on honing down my uh, personal nutrition and supplementation regimen and kind of helping me to ask the tough questions on uh, which of these are actually most effective and necessary at helping to maximize this area of my life. Now, the cool thing is that it is only $10 a month and there are absolutely zero ads. And the really cool thing is that the first 1,000 subscribers of mine that go down and use the link down in the description actually get a free uh, month trial of their premium membership. And so you guys definitely don't want to miss out on this opportunity. And again, the link for that is down in the description. Description. But uh, other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, if you guys have any questions about these two herbs in particular, um, leave a comment down below. And if you are interested in um, a complete hormone optimization supplement guide, I do have a link down in the description for that as well. Um, and so other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much.